my grandparents had a country house, and uh, so we walked on the roads. You know, this is a while back. I was probably about five, six years old. Well, the horses and the cows and pastures used to just follow me. So that was my encounter. It wasn't just horses and horses and cows, but it was birds would land near me uh, that I pay attention. Not really. Why do you think they did I think they did that because I listened to them. You know, I didn't, I was never told that uh, you're silly to talk to animals. So I talked to animals and and they heard me. Well, some people are, have the talent. I think we, we all have that talent, but we lose it as we grow in a different society. Je m'appelle Jean Simpson. My name is John Simpson. Me llama Juan Simpson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I had two other jobs, and then I'd, after work I'd go and, uh, or sometimes before work, I'd go and clean his animals and just sit down and watch them and study them. And I think that's the main secret to training is learning about the animals, uh, taking, the, taking time to uh, see what their personality is about. That's listening, that's also um, at first, you know, not knowing, because I don't think the talent I had as a, as a young boy, uh, I think I had lost some of it. So I uh, got reacquainted with it. You feel the need, the sadness, you know, things like this. And then you just start understanding not just people, but animals, you know. And actually, one thing helps the other, trying to understand people. Is feeling their needs and feeling just like you feel the needs of an animal and you try to just, you sit there and you say, okay, what do you need? And the animal, in my case, just kind of looks at me and said, you know, because it's not every day they, a human being is listening to them, and usually it's one of their own kind. And then you could say, then they feel your energy saying, yeah, you got it. And as soon as that, there's that, uh, there's that connection, then it gets uh, with that particular animal, then it, it, it they allow it to expand more and more. I mean, they don't want to, you know, they, they're part of a pack, or you're, and I'm part of a pack. You know, we're living in a place which is full of rhythm. Mm -hmm. And we have to be in the same rhythm. <laughs> is, or, or baby, or we'll probably lose it. You know, if you're in the wrong rhythm, you got to be in the rhythm of the earth and the rhythm of the, of the water, the way the water comes, and the rhythm of people, the animals, things like this. And uh, when things are too fast and crazy, you know, that's why 
so many people are now meditating and getting back into that slow your things down. But if you live in that slow your things down like animals do, animals don't meditate. If you focus too much, you're going to scare what's around you. So you don't want to focus on it. Mm. You know, if I did this... Yeah, totally. <laughs> you know, and you don't want to do this. You just want to say, oh, there's something there. There's something there. You know, mm. or you don't want to step there. There's, you know, you're going to step on something. Feel it before you, you know. And... Um, so, you know, it's, you know, get, get, a, get a understanding with the animal, what he's going to do, you know, before he does it. You're not spooking them, you're calm, they don't feel your energy, they don't feel, you know, the, the same energy that happens when the, the pride of lion awakes and says, hey, let's go hunting, and then all the animals of the, go from calm as to start looking over, you know, around. Mm -hmm. You know, it's just like entering a neighborhood or going to a war, and then you get uh, probably one of the reasons, uh, what do they call it, PTSD. You know, people get that because, you know, they never have a real time to relax, settle down. That's what the animals do, mm -hmm. you know. We're intruding into their home. Everywhere. Yeah. 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 There are Yellowstone and there's, oh, you'll see it. Yeah, they're like people and people. And yes. People and people. Uh -huh. Looking at them. Yeah. Yeah. Grab them instead of, uh, well, how can I get back to these animals? You know, uh, thinking that it's almost like the animals old. Mm -hmm. They come to they come to Yellowstone and they better see some animals. And, and feeling the energy as you're walking in a, a forest or or in the desert and uh, feeling the energy emanating from the animal without actually visually seeing them but feeling them and uh, the feeling is kind of like if somebody's staring at you uh, from behind and all of a sudden you feel like somebody's staring at you well you feel the energy back there of the person staring and, it, and you start looking back. Because I've seen you tell, like, give very complicated instructions to animals. Mm -hmm. Like, not only come or go, but like, more sophisticated stuff. Mm -hmm. And I wonder how... Well, basically it's images that they mm -hmm. see that I... You know, I don't, it just goes through and I know they're receiving it, the energy, you know, jump through a window. Exactly. But you say that without thinking of the words mm -hmm. jump and mm -hmm. through and window. Right? right, yeah. And if I do say it, or uh, if the animal is Teton, Teton, I don't have to say Teton. Mm -hmm. He knows me. He knows I'm talking about him, even though there's maybe other animal or people there. They they know it's I'm addressing them and not somebody else. So it's not like us who need to add uh, Lydia. Why don't you get up? Are you comfortable? You know, I would just say, Are you comfortable? Even if I'm looking at you, you would know that I'm, you know, I'm talking to you.
And do they answer? Like, do they tell you no or yes or how? They ignore me. <laughs> they don't hear. They don't hear you. Don't want to. Then you gotta say, food. You said it. <laughs> <laughs> and then they say, yes, okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Where are we eating at? Yeah. <laughs> You know, I didn't realize I had that talent and, until I was probably 30. You know, the talent to be able to speak to them. And, uh, and it's actually other people who told me uh, that you got talent, the animals are listening to you. It does, you know. There's a there's a understanding between them and I, and um, you know. And sometimes they choose to ignore me, and uh, or maybe they don't hear me, or maybe they just shut shut me up. So, um, but eventually they, you know, when it's time, then they respond. You know, is the animal about to, you know, that's what scares people is because they don't understand. You know, and it's something you don't understand, uh, you're afraid of, or you get violent against it, or you want to just suppress it. I mean, you could feel a tree is healthy, or you could feel that, oh, he's not feeling too good, must need some water. You know, and a lot of people are minus somewhere else and they forget their plants or they forget, you know, plant dies. Oh, I don't have a green thumb. No, you're not focused. You know, if you're going to get a plant, you're going to have to focus, you know, on that plant. If you decide to have a kid, you're going to have to focus on having that kid. Or if you're going to get a pet, a dog or a cat, you're going to have to focus. You can't forget them. can't forget them in your car and let him roast to death, you know. So there's a lot of things. You can't just be in, in your phone all the time. And just, I mean, there's other things happening around you. So if we get the other creatures around us, uh, we're going to lose them. You know, it's, it's, we have to be less selfish. And, uh, and not just take, 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 but give back, give back, give back. And that's how uh, uh, I think that's how we're going to eventually survive. Because if we don't do that, uh, we're going to lose ourselves. <laughs>